well, uh, blessed people. I want to share with you a conversation the Lord has had with me. Uh, this is probably the right time now to speak about this conversation with the church. I know that the revival is on in this land, in the house of the Lord, and many nations are tapped into this revival. And this is an awesome time in the history of the church because the Lord is visiting the church at this hour. And there is going to be an escalation of this revival, an increase of this revival as the Lord has spoken. But I want to share on now the implication of this revival that the Lord has spoken with me. The Lord Jehovah, he took me to Israel. The Lord has taken me to Israel. And when he took me to Israel, he has had a conversation with me there that I want to share with you now. While in Israel, then I saw God's covenant people, Israel, receive a ministry from abroad. I saw them receive a ministry from abroad. And the way the Lord dramatized for me that ministry from abroad, it was brought by aircraft. So I could see the aircraft lifting that ministry and bringing. That is just the Lord's way, God's way of demonstrating that importing from abroad, bringing from out. And I could see from afar as the ministry is entering Israel, facilitated by God's covenant people, the Israelis. And as the ministry came, I could see from afar that this silver, it's not white. The color is silver. It's grayish silver. It's not white at all. Remember, white is holy. White is glorious. White is righteous. The holiness of God is white. So the rightful ministry for God's covenant people, even the church, is white. I'm talking about the way the Lord speaks to his servant. So the ministry is silver, though shiny. I think that is where he confuses the Israelites from God's covenant people, but they brought him in. And then I could see how he's dressed, and uh, he wears the clothes of the high priest. In the temple of the Lord, I see him wearing the cloth of the high priest, including that sash, the one that drops down, the scar- all these things. He wears the complete regalia of the priest. And when he steps out, then there are a lot of people also in the land that have come to worship. And when he gives the command, I saw all of them bowing down and worshiping him. Again, the Lord has spoken with me about an event that is about to take place on the earth. It's a very, very significant event. It touches on the life of the church, the life of the nations of the earth. It touches on the glorious coming of the Messiah, my King, my Lord is coming. It touches on the glorious coming of my Lord, our Savior, our blessed Savior, the one that brought us this amazing grace, the one who comes to take the church in the rapture. This conversation has a serious bearing on the return of the Christ, the King of glory. And this is a conversation that has impact on the history of the earth on the close of time on the redemption of mankind and the church the zero count down to the end and in this conversation the Lord has spoken with me very very seriously about what is about to befall the earth and we all know that the prophecy on the glorious coming of the Messiah gravitates it revolves around the events in Israel so Israel is very central even for the Gentile church. And so the Lord has taken me to Israel. And by taking me to Israel, this is what the Lord has spoken to me about. I was there looking at God's covenant people. Going about their businesses. But I could see they are very thirsty for worship. And then I saw the Israeli plane, the Israeli Air Force to be specific. I saw them, three of them, lifting a ministry and bringing. That is just God's way of the 
demonstrating that coming from out, upon invitation, they bring from out. But they are lifting with strength again, with strength. And I could see from afar as they entered the Israeli airspace, and the Lord made me see that, look, it's silver. It is not white. It is silver, though shiny, but silver, it's not white. We know that when the Lord speaks, white is holy. White is righteous. White is glorious. White is His. Radiant. And this is silver, grayish, but silver and shiny. And so as they brought him in, the sun reflecting the shininess, the shininess of the silver, until they brought him in. And then the other moment I realized the Lord brought me to the temple of the Lord. And when he brought me to the temple of the Lord in Jerusalem, then I could see now the one they brought in walking at the altar of the temple and is wearing the dressings of the high priest. And including this cloth that goes down from the shoulder down on both sides with all the writings on. And then as he came out, and I could see that he is not, um, his garment is not holy. He's not white garment. But as he came out, he gave a command. To the Israelites, God's ancient people, God's covenant people, and they all went down on their stomach, all of them on their bellies, and they worshipped him. And I can see him standing there at the arch. I see all the details. The door where he comes out from at the altar of the house of the Lord, and he does that command. And this must be the tribulation temple, the apostate temple. But when he gave the command, they all went into their bellies and they worshipped him, God's covenant people. And the whole land, because I could see the whole nation, and the Lord said, the entire nation, worship him. But he confused them because he is not holy. It's, it's silver and shiny, not white. So when he was coming in, I could see that communication from the Lord. And so for them, they cannot see that difference. And then after that, as they worshipped him, then I saw white, white, white uh, thorns and thistles, white, covered the land. Many, many thorns, it was so difficult to walk. Though, though for the two prophets of the Lord, they could walk because we, I could see very clearly where it was, the strip where there are no thorns, and I could walk. So I saw a lot of thorns, a lot of thorns that some people were buying in the supermarket over there. And the security of the supermarket, the white shirt, and the armed guard in the door, people are coming in. But anyhow, uh, white thorn, <clears throat> a lot of white thorns, that strong ones, radiating from different directions, pointing different directions. It's as though they are coming from one base, but pointing all different directions up. The white thorn. White there tells you that this is the righteous judgment of God. This is the holy judgment of Jehovah that befalls the land because of worshipping this person here, this personality the Lord has introduced me to. This is the Antichrist. So this is a very significant conversation the Lord has had with me. This is the Antichrist. And so then I see the whole land is covered now on the, on the ground. It's covered with white stone. There is many, many of them, they appear to be coming from one base, but radiate out. So you see the white, but stone. And I knew where to walk over there. Those strips were thrown. I walked over there. But where they were lying everywhere, they, 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 as they tried to worship the white stone, that's now the righteous judgment of the Lord that befalls during the great tribulation. And then after that, then I had a conversation with the with the children of Israel, the children of Jacob, the house uh, of, of Jacob, and I spoke to them that this is not the Christ. This is not the Lord. Don't worship this man. And then now, there, there was the way. Okay, first of all, before that happened, before I engaged with them to tell them this is not, uh, this is not the Messiah. Don't worship him. He's not the Lord. Before that, there were, I tried to buy. The Lord makes me go to buy something in the supermarket. I see the guards, the guards with weapons, uh, guarding the supermarket. People are buying, 
and they said, they said if they check on you, okay, you are allowed, you are allowed to go and buy. So there was restriction on buying. The Lord talking about the mark of the beast. That would be a very important benchmark at that time for karma. Even just to go to buy food, people renounce Christ. But I remember telling them, Lord, this, this man here is not the Lord. This is not the Messiah. Don't worship him. But all of them worshipped him. It was amazing to see. And then after that, a situation ensued. When now, again, he turned against them and I showed them where to escape from. Where to escape. So there is a value on my left. It's green. If they follow the main way, there's going to be a genocide. Because they are waiting for them. As they are now renouncing him, but they take to the left as I instructed them. But then they go through the valley, which is greenery. There they, they are now safer. They connect ahead. I can see ahead. Much, much ahead, a safe place for them. So the Lord has spoken about what is coming to be sold the earth. The church needs to repent. The nation, the Gentile church, your time is winding up. You need to repent and turn away from sin. My king is coming. The Messiah is coming. My Lord is coming. The Messiah is coming. The Lord, the Jesus of Nazareth is coming. Finally, it's coming for the church. Because the Lord is already engaging me on the event that will take place in Israel. So bless people. This is the hour to receive the gospel. Believe the gospel. Be born again and be baptized. Look at how the Lord is ministering the gospel by power. Cripples are getting up here and there. The nations are brought fight for. Whatever it is that will impede you, block you from having the ministration of these two prophets, please download it. If it is pride, put it down. Pride takes you know pride will take you to hell though. Look at how the revi revival is rife as exploded in a blaze in Kenya. Cripples, just by one decree, cripples are popping up from deplorable conditions. It's now trending on Twitter throughout, throughout since the whole day. Throughout. Yeah. The entire nation is ablaze with the revival and the doings of Christ Jesus, his cross and his blood at Calvary. Don't miss this opportunity out of some pride, human ego titles and all these things, they, they, they amount to nothing before the Lord. I can give you that for free. All that matters is the disposition of your heart. And whether you are humble enough and contrite in your heart, repentant enough to listen to the instruction, singular focus on the instruction of the Lord, to repent and turn away from sin and walk in righteousness. That is the garment you wear in holiness, without which you cannot see the kingdom of God. You can't even meet the Lord. And so, blessed people, this is the conversation, the very people talk. It's a turning point. The people talk conversation the Lord has had with me about the prophetic timeline of this earth. The Messiah is coming. Please prepare the way of the Lord. The King is coming. My Savior is coming. Our blessed Savior is coming. The one that brought you the amazing grace. This wonderful, amazing grace where cripples are just getting up from deplorable conditions, from the sand and the, and the dust of the earth. They are now being given a new lease of life. This amazing grace. The king of the amazing grace is coming. The Savior is coming. Prepare the way, be holy. Remember, the church I saw climbing the stairs and entering heaven is a holy church. There is no question about that. There is no debate on that. That is the irreducible minimum. That cannot be reduced. That is not the exacting law of the grace. May the Lord bless you. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. This is the voice about whom it was written that I will send my messenger ahead of you before the mighty and most dreadful day of the Lord. When God the Father was seeking the Messiah and telling him he would send his messenger to prepare for him everything. Oh, it's a beautiful work he did at Calvary to purchase and deliver all men for our God in heaven. The Lord bless you. May you be wise enough to keep these words in your heart that on some day in heaven you may remember this announcement. The Messiah is coming. So that shalom, Pilate of Hazarin.